I think the vaccine is best positioned as a cleanup. So let's say we have a tumor that's been surgically removed, but we did not get good margins. That's really where we can help stimulate the immune system in order to help clean up what, what is still there. Torigen offers an autologous prescription product. It's a personalized cancer vaccine that's created from a surgically resected portion of tumor that gets submitted into our laboratory. The components of our vaccine are the patient's own tumor cells. So what we aim to do is really capture the patient-specific mutations and really the fingerprint of the tumor at the time it went wrong. Since cancer is a disease of mutations, those mutations start at the DNA level, but they result in proteins that are a direct result of those mutations right on the surface of those tumor cells. So what we aim to do is preserve those tumor-associated antigens in a way that locks in their conformational formation and is able to ensure that you're able to direct an immune response utilizing them. So we combine those patient-owned deactivated and preserved tumor cells with a novel biomaterial that helps direct cytotoxic T cell activation. Our vaccine has been utilized for uh, dogs with hemangiosarcoma, for mast cell tumors, soft tissue sarcomas, oral melanomas, squamous cell carcinomas. It really can be used for any tumor type that can be surgically excised. And then by working with our team, we would help you really understand if it should be used for that patient, depending on the overall extent of the disease and just really how aggressive that cancer is. With our immunotherapy, you're, be, you're able to capture what went wrong at the time it went wrong. So you're able to really, I mentioned before, take that fingerprint. That fingerprint and those patient-specific mutations are really kind of the, the answer that we need in order to start creating a response. Cancer grows because it's found a way to really either block the immune system from entering into that microenvironment, or it's found ways in order to deactivate the immune system inside of that tumor microenvironment. So if we, one, have a surgical resection of the tumor, we've disrupted that environment. But if we're also utilizing an immunotherapy in order to train the body that what went wrong shouldn't still be here and we need to gain a response in order to kill it, now we kind of have all of those components in order to create a successful vaccine in order to overcome that senescence that occurred how and in how that tumor grew. Our um, therapy is provided typically uh, less than the cost of chemotherapy um, for most owners. So this can be an affordable and accessible option for owners to consider. So that part can be done really fast. So we take less than a week uh, once that tumor comes in order to create that vaccine and send it back to the veterinarian for administration. A lot of times veterinarians send us tumors and we may not know what they are. And in that case, what we do is we work with our third party partners in order to provide histopathology services. So the tumor comes in, we'll segment out portions of the tumor that we save in our minus 80 freezer. We sent, take the rest, put it into formalin, send it off to for a pathologist to review. And then once we have their diagnosis, then we reach back out to that veterinarian in order to say, okay, well, based on this diagnosis, what would you recommend for next steps? Once the tumor uh, gets down to a single cell suspension, we have a chemical deactivation protocol that's going to kill the tumor cells, and then it's going to preserve um, the antigens on the outside, so keep their architecture intact. And then we go through a series of uh, of wash and uh, wash steps in order to to uh, rinse the cells and make sure that we're kind of keeping them stable, keeping those cell surface proteins there and kind of frozen at a time. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we combine it with our um, adjuvant, which is the biomaterial.
The vaccine is administered once per week for three weeks subcutaneously close to a lymph node near the excision. There are times where, um, let's say, there is a recurrence of the original tumor. And if that were the case, you know, we want to capture as much of the new antigens on that new tumor as we can. So if they undergo another surgery, um, providing a subsequent dose can, you know, be considered uh, for that pet. And then there are some uh, veterinarians, uh, mostly oncologists, that can utilize us for um, boosters, where let's say we don't have a recurrence of the tumor, the pet is doing very well, but we want to ensure that there's additional boost uh, to the immune system. And then if that's the case, then we can create a, a booster vaccine if we have additional material. So it all goes back to the amount of material that we have. We need to have at least the size of a pencil head eraser, if not more, in order to create the vaccine. Every patient and every tumor is different, but utilizing that patient's own tumor, again, like it, it gets us to the starting line of being able to create that therapeutic that could be given back to stimulate the immune response. Seeing as this is still an experimental product, we're still working in order to really understand it. However, we do have some really strong preclinical data showcasing the combination of our vaccine with radiation therapy has a very nice additive effect. So really the radiation destruction of those tumor cells combined with a systemic activation of the immune system of those antigens can be this really powerful one-two approach. We also believe that combining the vaccine with metronomic chemotherapy in order to deplete T regulatory cells can also be a very fantastic utilization of both immunotherapy and chemotherapy together. When it comes to uh, combining our therapy with anything else, we want to really avoid anything that's immunosuppressive. So anything like uh, uh, steroids where it's going to depress the immune response, we want to avoid that for at least 14 days prior to administering the vaccine. What we see most frequently reported in about 10% of patients are injection site redness, irritation, and mild lethargy. Uh, sometimes a nodule at the injection site can appear but disappear within a few days. So really it's kind of more of your common vaccine associated reactions. And that kind of speaks more to the mechanism of action because we're utilizing the patient's own deactivated tumor cells plus a novel adjuvant, we're really aiming on the body to pick up uh, those antigens and kind of have more of a slower and controlled response in order to build. So you're not using a jackhammer on the immune system. You're really kind of presenting a basket of goodies for the immune system to then understand what I should be formulating a response against.